Good morning. Welcome to Bushill Park Community Church. My name is Stewie and I'm the pastor. It's a pleasure to have you with us uh, wherever you're watching this morning. Let me read some words from Philippians chapter 1. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We're a church that is all about grace. God has shown his kindness to us, even though we don't deserve it, through sending his son, the Lord Jesus, to die on a cross, uh, taking the penalty of our sins, and then raising him to life again, where he's now exalted on high. And so as we join together this morning, we are going to praise him, starting with the words of our first song, Lift up your voices. Come on, come in, everybody. There is a God who is worthy of all our praise. He alone is Lord. come to him now in prayer. Loving God, our Heavenly Father, we worship you because of the grace you have shown us in the Lord Jesus. Thank you for saving us. We lift our voices now to you and ask that you would help us this morning to honour you with our lips and with our hearts and with our mind and soul and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Now our service this morning is a little bit different from normal. You'll notice as we go along, some of the elements that are included aren't what we always have in an online service. What we're doing is taking today as a chance to focus on our gospel partners and to pray for them. And then a little later, we'll focus on some other people as well and pray for them. And so in this first section of the service, what's going to happen is you're going to hear some updates from our mission partners around the world. And then members of the church family are going to lead us in prayer for them. So I'm going to hand over and we're going to hear from our mission partners. Well, good evening. Good evening, dear friends, brothers and sisters, saints of Bush Hill Park community church uh, greetings i'd love to say greetings from naples but i'm not actually in naples as i record this video it feels rather inauthentic i'm sat in my in my parents garden in chesham just around the m25 from enfield i've come over um, for a couple of weeks um, to catch up with my parents and to spend some time with my oldest daughter sophia over half term and it's been an absolutely lovely time of rest a lovely time to be immersed in uh, in this kind of greenery very different to the naples setting uh, and a time just to uh, catch up with um, my mum and dad and uh, my oldest daughter. Thinking, how would I like you um, to pray for us? First, I'd love you to pray for some of the non-Christians that attend church on a, on a Sunday evening on a regular basis. Um, and I'll start from the kind of longest attending and move to the most, uh, the shortest attending. So we've got Francesco, Francesco, who lives next door to the church. He's the person who lives closest to the church. He's been coming on and off for three years. He's um, in his early 50s. He's got a young, two young daughters um, and he used to come regularly with Eleanor, his youngest daughter. Francesco, he's, he's been to many of the things that we've put on. He comes almost most, most Sunday evenings and, and yet isn't yet um, converted. So I'd love you to pray for Francesco. I'd love you to pray that the Lord would uh, convince him by his spirit um, of his sin, convict him of his sin and bring him to faith. Then there's Anna. Anna's been coming for 18 months. Um, she's a, a single woman who is in her early 60s, uh, makes a long journey to come to us, loves being part of the community, but also hasn't yet um, professed faith. Myself and a, another lady, Anna's age, Christian lady who's a member of our church, and Anna have just finished three, three um, Bible studies on the gospel, trying to help Anna understand clearly uh, the gospel and what it is she has to do to respond to it. So please pray for Anna. Uh, it'd be lovely to see her converted, wonderfully uh, converted. The next person is Pasquale. Pasquale has been coming uh, as a single guy in his um, probably early 40s. He has um, he, he's been struggled with mental health problems in the past and he's been coming now regularly for the last six months. Uh, and another another person who comes from quite a distance to be with us, I think, again, appreciates the community, appreciates the uh, the friendship and the fellowship. Um, be lovely to see him um, born again with a new heart. And then there's Vincenza, and uh, I don't know much about Vincenza. Vincenza's uh, again late fifties. Um, she's been coming for the last month pretty regularly. Uh, she she wandered in and was really struck by it, spoke to the person that welcomed her, said that she'd love to come back next week. She did come back next week. She brought her partner the week after, she brought a friend. And then last Sunday, she was in church on her own. As I say, I don't know much about Vincenza, but she keeps coming back. And we pray that it would be the gospel and the Lord Jesus that would be attracting her um, and that the Lord would be doing a work in, in her life. So I'd love you to pray, pray for those four people, Francesco, Anna, Pasquale, and Vincenza. Can I also ask you to pray for our relationship with Christ Church Naples? We meet as a church in a big old uh, Anglican church, and it's been a huge blessing. We're not an Anglican church, we're, we're a, a, a free evangelical church, much like yourselves, uh, but it's been a huge blessing for us to have the use of that building. It's in a strategic place in the center of Naples. It's an enormous space, which has meant that we've been able to keep meeting on a Sunday evening during this time. Please pray that the Lord would keep that door open for us. Uh, six months ago, a newer vicar was appointed to the church. She's a, uh, she's a female vicar. She's theologically different to us. Um, and, and sadly, we've, we've not been allowed to run our holiday club, which we've run in the past number of years and has been an, a great way of reaching out to the community. So we're not allowed to run that this summer. Please pray that um, the Lord would grant us wisdom and grace as we interact with, um, with the Anglican church and that he would keep that door open for us. 
And can I ask you to pray for uh, an evangelistic initiative that, that we launched last month? It's a, it's a series of monthly interviews. It's quite hard as a church to know how to do evangelism. Um, at the moment, we would normally do suppers and uh, get holiday clubs and, and get people in and, and, and eat together. And obviously, we can't, can't do any of that. So we're, we're online and we're, we're doing a series of interviews. So last month, we did faith and politics. The idea is it's, it's the gospel and how the gospel impacts life. So last month, it was faith and politics, and we interviewed a, a Neapolitan politician Christian and, um, and talked through faith and politics. And there was some good interaction online and people asking questions, and that was good. We've planned for next Friday, the 11th of June, um, the next interview on, on faith and sport, where I will be interviewing a, uh, a top volleyball player, top, he's an American based in Italy, he's a top volleyball player. And we had planned to do it next Friday, the 11th of June at 9 p.m. It just so happens that Italy are playing Turkey in the Euros next Friday at 9 p.m. So we figured that wouldn't be a good time to run an interview on faith and sport. So we shifted it to the Saturday, Saturday the 12th, 9 p.m. Please pray. Please pray for that. It's so hard as we do these things online to know where we sow the seed um, and we trust that the Lord would, would make it grow in good soil. Please pray for that. Pray for us. Um, can you pray for us as a family? We, we very much hope to be able to come back to the UK uh, as, as a whole family this summer, but it's, it's complicated at the moment, as, as we all know. So uh, pray that we would entrust that to the Lord and that he would open that door if it's his will for us. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the Odins. Lord, we thank you for the work you have done through them in Naples. Thank you for enabling them to serve your church in that part of Italy. And so, Lord, we pray for the non-Christians attending the church. We pray that they will be called by the Lord to repent and follow Jesus. We also pray for good relationships with the local Anglican church to continue, despite theological differences, in order to run holiday clubs and other events in their building. We pray that they will be united in your word and have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. We pray, Lord, for the evangelism events. We pray especially for the online interview. And Lord, we want to pray for this interview with the pro volleyball player about Christianity and sport. Lord, please may many people watch and learn about the gospel and turn to the Lord Jesus. And Lord, we want to pray for Mark and Jen, Sophia, Inez, Louisa and Archie. May they all be able to get back to the UK and be united as a family. Please, Lord, we pray that they'll be able to get through all the travel challenges and that they'll be able to get to the UK safely. Lord, we pray that they'll be able to have a restful time with their family and friends and that you keep them safe and well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello, everybody at Bush Hill Park. It's great to be in touch. Uh, thank you so much for your prayers and your support. Uh, we're just having a couple of days away here for half term. Uh, with the kids which is a real pleasure um, thanks for your prayers for UFM it's obviously been a fairly mixed 15 months as it has for the rest of you uh, some highs some lows for those serving in different parts of the world we're finding that um, Covid is really hitting people in the majority world now more than it was in the early parts of the pandemic it's great to pray for those who are struggling to get back to their place of service or who are finding it difficult to get out of their place of service for the times of home assignment uh, pray especially for contacts in places like India uh, in Brazil uh, where things are getting really quite tough. Um, in the middle of all of the challenges, great encouragements, God's opening new doors of opportunity. We had a, a UFM family prayer meeting about 10 days ago. Uh, we heard of an Afghanistan refugee family coming to faith in Thailand. Uh, we heard of uh, a guy and his 86 uh, year old uh, mum coming to faith in the Republic of Ireland uh, and those stories have been replicated elsewhere in other places. Um, so thank you for your prayers. Please pray for patience and wisdom in the work as we navigate these days and try and lead the, the mission through some uh, uh, challenging pastoral situations, again accentuated by the COVID pandemic. Um, and just a bit about the home side, we are all well. Bethia is about to start secondary school in September and Nathaniel, our youngest, will be starting primary school, which is a new phase for us. I'm hoping to get a bit more involved in some pastoral work on a volunteer capacity at UFM and also dipping my toes back in the water of medical work. So we'd appreciate your prayers for that. And yeah, and it's lovely to be in touch with you and thank you for your prayers. Nice to see you. Bye bye. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for our mission partners who had your call and were ready to go where you send them. 
We join our faith with pressed family in thanking you for being able to meet together again on Sundays to worship you. Thank you also for the restart of Pride Day Kids Group. Thank you, Father, for the new children coming on Fridays. We pray for stability and clear understanding of your word so that these children will eventually choose the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We also pray for Rachel for a suitable job where your name will be glorified through her. May the press family continue to live their lives pleasing to you wherever they are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is your health and salvation. Come all who hear, brothers and sisters, draw near. Praise Him in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord above all things so mightily reigning, keeping us safe at His side and so gently sustaining. Have you not seen all you have needed has been met by His gracious ordaining? Praise to the Lord who went darkness and sin are abounding, who when the godless are rampant all goodness confounding, shines with his light, scatters the terror of night, safely his people surrounding. Praise to the Lord who shall prosper our work and defend us. Surely His goodness and mercy shall daily attend us. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do, who with His love will befriend us. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in me adore Him. All that has life and breath come now with praises before Him. Let the Amen sound from His people again. Gladly with praise we adore Him. We've made it to half time in our service and we're going to take a moment to look at God's word, the Bible. But we're also at half time in our series in the book of Philippians. Uh, some of you will be aware it's the European Championships coming up and we need to get used to the idea that there is going to be a lot more football on our TV screens. Now, I can imagine you watching at home and some of you will be holding your head in your hands because you can't think of anything worse. And some of you will be cheering and celebrating because you can't wait to see more of the footy. But the thing about when the football is on TV is that we always get the halftime analysis from the pundits in the studio. It's their chance to look back at what's happened so far and show us the highlights. And that's what we're going to do today as we look at Philippians. We're just going to look at some of the highlights that we've looked at so far, rather than preach through a whole passage new this week. Uh, so let's pray 
and ask for God's help as we think about all the things that we've learned so far in this great book. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it teaches us to have joy in Jesus. We pray that you would help us remember the things we've been taught and put them into practice. Amen. So what are the highlights which sum up for us everything that's happened so far in the book of Philippians? Well, I'm going to take one verse from every sermon that we've looked at so far as a summary verse for the things we've learned. Here's the first one. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. I thank my God every time I remember you. Very early on in the letter, Paul took the opportunity to thank God for his gospel partners in Philippi, the church that he was writing this letter to. He had all kinds of things to be thankful for. Their faith in the Lord Jesus. They had believed the gospel of grace as Paul had preached to them. The fact that they had stood alongside him right at the very start of his ministry when uh, actually he'd been thrown in jail and, and beaten just there in Philippi. But they'd also stood by him as his ministry had gone on, sending him financial gifts when he was in trouble, supporting him as he kept going, doing the work that God had given him to do. And so when Paul thinks about the way that God has been working in this church, his gospel partners, he's filled with joy because he loves them. The question is, how are we getting on at praying for our gospel partners. As a church, we are in partnership with other churches in Enfield that are sharing the gospel. Berry Street Community Church and Silver Street Community Church and Enfield Town Community Church and Causeway Community Church up in Potter's Bar. God is doing some really exciting things in our partner churches. We're seeing people come to know the Lord Jesus. We're seeing new opportunities for them to share about Jesus in those places. Now that should bring us some joy. But a lot of the time, I think we probably forget about what's happening in those other churches. We don't think about it all too often until it pops up on a prayer sheet somewhere and somebody puts a prayer point in front of us uh, saying, thank God that this has happened. If we are in gospel partnership with these people, they should be on our minds. We should love them. We should be filled with joy at everything God is doing. And further afield, we were praying for our mission partners around the world today, weren't we? They are people who were part of our church family and we've sent them out to go and do God's work elsewhere in the world. We mention them in prayer in services and we mention them in prayers at prayer meetings but how often are they on our minds during a normal week? How often are we thanking God for everything he's doing in them and through them? We should be thanking God for our gospel partners. Our second summary verse is a little bit further on. Uh, one, uh, Philippians chapter 1 verse 18. What does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. As Paul moved on in his letter, he wanted to clear up a few things about his situation. The Philippians were worried that while he was in chains, it wasn't really very good for gospel progress. Not so, says Paul. Christians in Rome had been encouraged to preach the word of God. Now, while some people were doing it to help Paul, it seems that actually some people were doing it to hurt Paul. Now, while you and I probably would have got a bit grumpy about someone doing that to us, Paul didn't mind one bit. Because he knows what should be the most important thing of all, that Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. When we think about that, 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 those verses, I wonder, do we have the same priorities as the Apostle Paul? Here's a way of thinking about it in terms of what we might face in our daily week. When you're walking down the road and you see a bus go past and it's got an advert on the back for a mega church nearby and you, know, you think, oh, they don't do it like us or, oh, they're taking people away from our church. Or do you see an advert on the back of a, church, a bus 
advertising a church that preaches the gospel and you think, wow, brilliant. Someone is preaching about Jesus in our town. Isn't that great? Or when we think about the future and what it's important for us to do as a church when social distancing stops. Are we thinking, oh, I really hope things get back to normal so that I can be comfortable and church can be more like I want it to be? Or are we thinking, oh, I really hope that we can get out and preach Christ to people so that they will get to know him and put their trust in him? Have we got the same priorities as Paul when we look at the work that needs to be done? The saving message of Jesus needs to be preached in our neighbourhood. And because of that, we rejoice. Here's the third highlight. Our summary verse is chapter 1 and verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Paul's situation was pretty tricky. He was facing the future, though, with confidence. He was sure that God had a plan and that things would be okay because of the prayers of the Philippians and the provision of the Holy Spirit. Paul knew that he was going to lift Jesus high no matter what happened to him by what he said and what he did. Paul truly believed that to live is Christ and to die is gain. He would either get on with the work that Jesus had for him to do, strengthening the churches so that their faith would grow, or he would get to go and be with Jesus face to face. Now, when we looked at this verse before, we were challenged to think about how we want to use the rest of our lives, no matter how long the Lord has for us. It could be decades and decades, or it could be a shorter time. Are we thinking about making sure that we've got a, a good job and a comfy home and a caring partner and family around us? Or are we, are we thinking about what God wants us to be doing? Well, were there practical things that we thought, do you know what? I could be doing this to help strengthen the faith of somebody else that I know. Perhaps it's someone in our church. We could go up to them and say, hey, I found this out about Jesus this week. Isn't Jesus great? Or perhaps there was a way that you could help someone because they were struggling and didn't know what to think about a situation. Sitting and praying with them, for example. Have you done any of that since we looked at this verse? Have you thought about how Jesus wants you to use your, your life for him? Does your thinking about death still need to change? Because we need to remember that it is actually gain to go and be with Jesus. To live is Christ, to die is gain. What's our next highlight then from uh, Philippians? Well, it's chapter 1, verse 27, where Paul says this. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Paul spent the opening verses showing how the gospel of the Lord Jesus had shaped, shaped his life and changed him forever. But now he turns his attention to the Philippian Christians, his gospel partners. He wants them to think about the ways that the gospel should be changing them and the things that they do. And so the way it should be changing us. That is summed up by this command to conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel. Our behaviour as Christians needs to reflect that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the boss. He's in charge. He's our king. We need to learn to obey everything that Jesus has commanded us. But we also need to learn to do it in a way that reflects that we are being like Christ. We need to grow in his character so that we are more loving and joyful and peaceful and patient and kind and good and gentle and self-controlled. We want to do the things that Jesus did the way that Jesus did them. That is what it means to live in a manner worthy of the gospel. Now, when I look back on the last few weeks, I'm only too aware that there are things that I have thought and said and done which aren't very worthy of the gospel. 
And while I know that there is forgiveness in Jesus, I also need to remember that I need a church family around me. And I need God's Holy Spirit within me to help me as I struggle to live the right way, a way that is worthy of the gospel. Being together as a church family helps us to help one another in the struggle to follow Jesus. Because we can be honest about how things are tough. We can help one another and we can together ask God's help to keep going. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. What's the next highlight? Well, it's Philippians 2 verse 5. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. As we moved into chapter 2, Paul started to look at the question of unity in the church. And he unpacked some of the attitudes and actions that would help the church family in Philippi stick together when things got tough. All in all, it boiled down to this. We need to think the way that Jesus did. Not being selfish or looking out for our own interests, but humbling ourselves and putting other people first. Just like Jesus did when he stooped down from heaven and came to earth to die on a cross. Again, as I look back on the last couple of weeks, I wonder how well have we managed to put this one into practice? It can be really tough for us to put other people first at the best of times. And when we're under pressure, it can feel even harder to do what's right and think of others first. I wonder, has there been a moment for you where God has helped you in the last couple of weeks to think about someone else in our church family? To think about that person and go, oh, I wonder how they're coping with this situation. Oh, I, I wonder if they need any help at the moment. And I wonder if God has actually helped you to say, do you know what? Even though it's going to cost me some time and some effort, I'll go and help them. I'll go and get them that thing they need. If you can look back on the last couple of weeks and you can think of a moment where you've done that for someone in your family or in our church family, then praise God. He's at work in you. And he's helping you to make your attitude the same as that of Jesus. It's brilliant. Let's pray that God will help us to do that even more as the weeks go on. What's our final highlight then from Philippians so far? It's chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Finally, last week, Paul continued to encourage the Philippians to work out their salvation. As they obeyed now, they showed who they were going to be revealed to be on the day of Christ when Jesus returns. The blameless and pure children of God. But this wasn't just a pep talk from Paul to kind of G them up to work a bit harder and be better at obeying God. Or even worse, uh, an attempt from Paul to say, come on, you need to work your salvation. You need to save yourselves by the things you do. No, Paul wasn't saying that at all. Paul is absolutely clear that this work was only possible because God gave the Philippians the power and the motivation to do it. It's God who works in you to will, that is to want, and to act, to work, according to his good purpose. How have we been getting on at obeying Jesus? Perhaps you've been struggling and making mistakes. I'm sure we all have uh, from time to time. Now, it might be that our mistakes have been because we were trying to do it all by ourselves. Uh, we didn't want any help from God. We said, no, I can do this all by myself. I can be good. I won't make mistakes. Guess what? That's going to go wrong. We can't do it by ourselves. But we might have made the opposite mistake too. We might have gone, well, okay, I'm going to not do anything. God, you make me good. I won't do anything. You just do it to me. And we've been lazy and we've not been working hard at trying to obey God either. That's not right. God doesn't just snap his fingers and make everything good in our lives. 
We need to be relying on God in prayer to work in us so that we want to do things his way and so that we will do things his way according to his good purpose. We need God's help if we're going to put into practice the things we've been learning so far in Philippians. And as we've looked back this morning over those different verses, I hope you've been praying that God would help you to remember the things we've been taught and to live in the light of what Jesus has done for us. Let's pray and ask for God's help to do that now. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all that you've been teaching us, all that you've been showing us about what it means to live as followers of Jesus. Thank you that Jesus is a wonderful saviour. Thank you for the grace you've shown us in him. And please, we pray, would you help us as we try to live his way more and more in a manner worthy of the gospel? We ask for your spirit's help to honour and obey you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our service continues as we sing our next song, There is a Redeemer.
into the second half of our service, we're going to start looking at some slightly different people. And in particular, we're going to have a chance to hear from our Oak Hill students who are moving on and leaving us this summer. It's a chance for us to hear uh, what they've been up to, where they're going and how we can pray for them next. So we'll again hear a little report from them and then a member of the church family will pray for them. So let's hear from our Oak Hill students. Morning, everybody. Well, uh, I guess today's a bit of a sad day. So um, we're, yeah, we're recording this to say officially goodbye to you all. Um, but we wanted to say, uh, as we do that, we want to say thank you so much for um, all of your support and care and love for us these past three years. Um, they've been uh, a full three years. They've been a different three years. Uh, but we have absolutely loved being a part of Bushill Park and uh, having the opportunity to be at Oak Hill as well. So, um, yeah, we just want to say thank you very much to you all. Thank you particularly for um, the teaching that we've received since we've been at Bushill Park, for the fellowship we've enjoyed, for the meals we've had with people. Um, thankful for particularly as we look back for the youth group. Hey, guys, thanks so much for all of your uh, fun and thanks for so much for showing us what it is to live for Christ um, at school and things aren't easy. Um, so well done for that. Um, yeah, so that's some of the things we're thankful for. Yeah, I know some of my fondest memories will be the Tots group on a Tuesday. We'll definitely miss that. Uh, we made some great friends there and we're always supported really well um, by Sarah and Catherine there. And also the youth group too. That's one of my, yeah favourite moments uh, when we were able to do that and yeah I was just really encouraged by all you guys living out your faith with your friends Um, yeah so thank you so much for letting us be part of that. Uh, so yeah as we move on I guess as most of you all know we, we're heading over to Northern Ireland um, not too far away um, please do come and visit us if you can um, as we go there I will be starting as an assistant pastor in a Baptist church uh, in the centre of Belfast and um, yeah so your prayers for that will be really appreciated as I take up that role that I would settle in quickly get to know the people in the church really well um, and serve them um, and yeah witness to Christ there in that city um, I'd love your prayers for that. Um, and we would love your prayers for the girls as well as they settle into a new place and for Lydia Grace she starts school in September so it'd be great to pray for her that she'd settle well um, and also I'm starting a job in September at a primary school so I just really appreciate prayer for um, confidence in Jesus and strength and ability to do that job well and also to be able to share Jesus with the people I work with too. Um, yeah. Yeah well so yeah thank you very much um, uh, thanks for your prayers as we uh, go on I uh, do you just want to say thank you. I know that Oak Hill um, students coming in is a weird thing for you uh, for you guys. You kind of have a roll rollover of people quite regularly, but we are thankful for the support and, and care that you offer. I think having a local church behind us and behind people like us is, um, is a huge support. So thank you for that. Um, and yeah, we will see you all soon, hopefully. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Dear Simon, Heather, Lydia, Grace and Naomi, we're all going to miss you so much. It's been a pleasure being able to go to church with you. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the farewells and thank you for the relationship and the friendship that we've bonded with them over the years. We pray, Lord, for their journey mercies as they travel to Northern Ireland, that you'll keep them safe as they go there. We pray that they'll settle into their new home and that Lydia, Grace and Naomi will like their new school and they'll make some new friends. We pray for the church that they move into, Lord. We pray that they'll settle in and that you bless them as they will further the work of your Lord Jesus and that they'll glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to miss you guys and good luck. All the best. Morning, everyone. Uh, looking back over the last year in London, we're thankful for a few things. So I think the headlines for both of us are in involve what we've learned and the people we've met. So for me, obviously, lectures and essays and all the, the stuff around the classroom, it's just been wonderful to think deeply about God, his word, his works. And then alongside that, it's been wonderful to get to know a new church family too, um, albeit through lockdown. Yeah, I've been really thankful to get the chance to audit some lectures to keep learning and growing. Um, a bit a bit like Ben, but not as much probably. And... Uh, 
I've been really thankful to pick up some old friendships um, from our time before down in London and to, to kind of grow some new gospel friendships for going back. Yeah, um, and where we're heading is Morecambe. It's the place we've been for the last few years anyway. Uh, we're heading back to a church we know, a church, church we love. So looking forward to, to yeah, picking up old relationships, picking up where we left off. Um, not quite though, because I'm going to start as assistant pastor there in September. And um, where Kaz was working for the church, she's now going to be doing something else. Hmm. Did you say what the church was called? I didn't. No, it's called Church by the Bay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking forward to getting back, uh, getting stuck in. Um, I'll be supporting Ben and I'll be doing some work helping to resource and train those across the UK in children's and youth ministry. I'll be doing that helping um, uh, a charity called Growing Young Disciples and through Crosslands, which is distance um, theological training as well. And um, if you'd be willing to pray for us that's wonderful we're very th thankful for that um you could pray for a smooth move over the next week uh, back up to Morecambe um that you could pray that we'd settle back in quickly that it wouldn't be a weird time where you know relationships feel strained but we'd be able to hit the ground running there and then just for both of us as we prepare for September you could pray that um we rest well where we can uh, that we'd be growing in godliness in our love for for Jesus for each other and uh, just yeah, getting ready to to start well in September. Thanks all. Thank you. Let's pray for Ben and Cass Peterson. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for Ben and Cass Peterson and the kind and caring individuals that you've made them to be and the gifts that you've given each of them. And we thank you for bringing them to us this year at Bushall Park Community Church. Thank you for their friendship and their loving and willing service to us all, particularly through the youth group Fixed and through leading the music at the recent 4pm services. We're very grateful to you for the blessing and encouragement they have been to us. And Lord, we pray that you would go ahead of them as they return to Church by the Bay in Morecambe, Lancashire. We pray that they would settle quickly into their new roles. We pray for Ben as he becomes the assistant pastor at the church, that he would make wise and godly decisions in ministry and would encourage many in their walk with you. And we pray for Kaz as she starts part-time teaching for the Christian organisation Growing Young Disciples, that she would teach faithfully and that the course will help many youth group leaders to be better equipped to serve in their local churches. Please bless their work and bring much fruit from both their ministries, we pray. And we also ask that you would bless their marriage, help them to grow in their love for each other and for you, and might that love overflow to others around them. Give them boldness and courage to speak to those around them about the good news of Jesus, that they might both be a light for you in their community. And we ask that you would provide some good Christian friends for them both in this new place, to walk alongside them, to encourage them, to sharpen them, and to point them to our Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In a moment, we're going to sing our closing song, Let Your Kingdom Come, a song which focuses on the work of sharing the gospel in the world. But before we do that, uh, let's finish with a closing prayer. Loving God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for the partnerships in the gospel that we have as a church family. We thank you for our mission partners and all the work that they're doing with all the struggles and challenges it brings and the joys and encouragements too. We celebrate with them and we commit ourselves to pray for them in the ongoing work that you have prepared for them to do. Father, we pray too for our Oak Hill students as they prepare to move on. Thank you so much for the fellowship we've enjoyed with them over the years. Thank you for the opportunities that you've provided for them in the future. And though we're sad to see them go, we rejoice 
that you have things in advance prepared for them to do. We ask that you would be with them, helping them as you are already with us and helping us as a church family to live and speak for Jesus. And so we pray that we would continue to do our part in the mission of preaching Christ to this neighbourhood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray now in the words of our song that God's glorious cause would engage our hearts and that Jesus Christ might be known where we are. Christ be known wherever we are. We ask not for ourselves before your renown. The cross has saved us, so we pray your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your will who are we Lord use us as you want whatever the test by grace we'll preach your gospel till our dying breath let your kingdom come let your will be done so that Everyone might know your name. Let your song be heard everywhere on earth till your sovereign work on earth is done. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come